And then most importantly, once you connect them, you can see, I don't, <laughs> oh my God, it's gotten worse. Oh no, <laughs> I, um, but you see my concern here. Um, whoa, that's some intense light. Okay. All right. Um, I'm back from my long trip helping my parents move. It was a long drive. I drove from Arizona all the way to Georgia. I don't recommend doing that. Or maybe I do. I don't know. It's kind of fun. It's not fun. Now I am ready to continue my development. But if you're not living under a rock, everybody probably should know. New Zelda game dropped. Something that's really interesting about the game is that it has this build mechanic. And to celebrate the week of Zelda release, I'm thinking that I'm gonna make my own version of that mechanic. And I wanna kind of play with it. I think it's a good learning experience. And maybe some of you guys are also thinking about making the kind of game that is more free form like that. So as a kind of refresher for game development for myself, returning from a long vacation, this week, I'll do another one week build on Zelda build mechanics. That doesn't quite roll off the tongue. I don't know what to call it. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, here we go. I forgot to mention, you know, first thing I need to do is figure out what's all there. So I'm gonna play some game. So I started playing and actually originally I was planning on playing it for just like a day, maybe a few hours just to get an idea of what the build mechanics are like and how it works. But, you know, it was actually pretty fun. I think, um, I mean, this is probably a topic for another video, but like the game Zelda Tears of the Kingdom feels like a culmination of all the lessons that open world RPGs have been learning up to this point. I and mean, there's a problem with the accessibility, but if you, get past that and just think about it as pure gameplay and game design perspective. Like the quests, side quests are all meaningful. Every corner and every landmarks are filled with things to discover. Rewards are always there. I had to stop myself. I couldn't finish the game. Um, I, I think finishing the game itself isn't too long of a process as a player have a choice to finish the game early, but there are so many things that you can do besides finishing the game. I didn't want to finish the game. Like I wanted to do other things, other extra things. So I had to just kind of stop myself. So quick update, I have been working on the sprites and I think I'm, I'm done with everything that I want to have together. So I have some materials, like here's a short platform. So it's just like a little wooden platform, long one. So you can just kind of put these together, rotate it around. That's the idea, just like the game. You have little generic fantasy hero in green with blonde hair. I'm not I'm not trying to do too much. So here's a fan. So yeah, um, that's the sprite so far. The next thing I need to do is just use the tile map provided by the game engine, which I can do easily and set up the basic level one with some gap and then make the gravity work so I can test with the uh, you know, dropping platforms and see how it rotates. I don't think I have to worry too much about the gravity and physics of things because most game engines, if not all, comes with basically physics engine built in and Godot is not an exception. So I'll just have to draw the map, drop the object, you know, give it the little image of the platform and then see that it just works and we'll go from there. As you can see, I have a scene set up so let me just show you real quick the setup I have. I have a tile map and I drew these tiles and then uh, I'm only using some of them. So I drew this map right here. And well, okay, so before I go on, let me just explain the point of why I'm sharing this right now on this part in particular. Um, the idea is setting up the gravity and the platform is so simple that I don't need to pre-plan this part and I can just show you straight up and it'll demonstrate how easy it is, hopefully. If I run into something, we'll quickly find out. Um, but yes, here we are. The way I did it is I just simply look for rigid body, right? So rigid body 2D. So this is 
what you use if you want to make a you know physics simulated object. And then I'll name this hook, though I'm not sure if I'm actually going to use the hook in my uh, thing. And then you can see it created one in this position, and it's empty right now. So I'm going to add a sprite node. I'm going to call it sprite. I already have a sprite ready for the hook. So I have a hook right here. So I'm going to just drag and drop the hook, and you can see the hook is open. What I'm trying to do here is I just want them to fall and then stack onto each other. So uh, let's get that set up. As of right now, it's just gonna go through. What I need is I need to give a uh, collision box. So let's do that. So I already did it for a long plank. I'm gonna do it for a short plank. Once again, you just add a node into that rigid body and then look for a collision shape. I'm doing collision shape 2D, the simple one, since that's all I need. Adding a rectangle here. You know, I'm 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 talking like I know this will work, but I haven't tried this at all, so I actually don't know if it'll actually work or not. It'll probably work. Wow, look at that. It even shows like how many sections it Oh, it's a multiple I see. Okay. Well, interesting. So I have this. Technically, right now, when I just drop it, when I just play the game, um, it needs to work perfectly. So let's see. Click play. Oh, did you just see that? That was awesome. Okay, hold on. Let me let me uh let me make it so that it scales up the screen so you can see it better. It actually worked. I mean, I'm so excited about this. Hold on. Um all right, it's gonna go quick because it's going to fall, rotate, and all that stuff. Let's see if it works. We oh oh my god no it just worked I mean it just kind of straight up worked so I think my today's day is uh, done here um hey that was the most difficult part in my opinion uh, and then it just works so the next thing I need to do either tonight tomorrow I don't I'm not sure maybe I'll get a little feel for it is to make it so that these objects now that work physics wise individually have them be able to connect. Okay, it's time to get cooking with the connecting the objects and making it work um, together. I did some research on what I could do, the options of functionalities that exist in the engine to allow me to put the rigid bodies together so that they work as a single um, body. And I found this thing called a joint. They have different types of joints, and namely I'm looking at pin joints. So you can see a little bit, I was testing it. So I have this gap that this one of the long planks alone wouldn't cover. So the idea here is that I want the players to um, connect two long planks in order to make a cross. Now, if I just do this right now, it'll just fall in the middle. So what I need to do is have ways to um, pin them together. Now, the thing about the pin joints is that it works as a pivot. So if I just put one, so I add a thing called pin joint, and then I can assign the two objects I want to connect, right, like this, long plank one and two. And I got to put the joint where I want them to be connected. So between these two right here, like this, I believe because it's just single point, it works as a pivot. So if I play this right now, it will collapse in the middle, but they will look like they're connected, pivoted like that. Yeah. Did you see that? Hopefully post edit, I can do a little slow motion there. So you can see it. Now, in order to make them um, not collapse, I want hopefully two on the each of the corner, or like one in each of the corner, so a total of two would fix it. So I'm gonna put another pin right here, and if I play it, like that, you can see them uh, being connected. There's, it's still a little funky, but you know, for the purpose of what I'm trying to do, I think I'm okay with that. Now, only problem here that I see is that, okay, I can manually add the joints to fix things in place. I need to programmatically uh, determine the surface, the closest surface between the two objects to put the pins along the 
edges of the contact. There's some complicated logic I need to implement there. I don't exactly have a solution in mind yet, so I need to kind of explore the options a little bit. One thing I can think of is somehow if I can... I'm doing the laundry. This was a bad idea. I shouldn't be doing the laundry and recording at the same time. But anyways, there's a lot of complexity there that I wasn't expecting, and I don't have any experience in doing this, so we'll see. We'll see what I find out. All right, um, I'm kind of done with the day now. I've made some changes. There's a problem. I forgot to eat, but it's okay. I was too enthusiastic about getting the solution for this um, connection detection working that I, you know, simply forgot to eat, which happens to the best of us. I'm very hungry. There's nothing to eat in my fridge and also nothing I can order at this hour. I'm thinking I should resist. I should probably sleep. But that's besides the point. Uh, I want to show you something real quick. Um, I think it's pretty cool. The basic problem that I was trying to solve here um, was for two objects, when they come close together, I need the game logic to determine which points within the object needs to be connected to each other. My basic thought process there was that oh, it needs to be able to detect the closest point between the two bodies and then highlight those areas to bring them together. So that, that was a little bit complicated. So I'll show you how that looks right now. I have this little platform that's moving around according to my mouse. And then there's another one down here. If I bring them close together, you can see how it highlights the area. If I come through this way, it highlights this area. I can highlight right here. This was actually pretty complicated. I was thinking about many different ways to do it, um, but what I actually ended up doing is a bit of a tedious process. So you can see right here, the plank has a feelers. These are the little area that I'm calling a attachable surface. And when they come close together, I made it so that it calculates so for example, if it comes together like this, whenever another feeler touches the feeler of the active um, surface, it'll calculate the distance between um, the feelers and choose the shortest path. And whichever has the shortest path will win and it'll be highlighted. Only problem is that it's a bit of a tedious setup. For each of the objects that exist in the game, I need to surround the object with the feelers and the little surface setup, which takes a bit of a work because you need to kind of pack the surfaces manually one by one, rotate them and all that stuff. And so that's going to be a bit of a work. I'm going to get that done hopefully tonight. Once I do the manual work of uh, filling out all the attachable surfaces on the objects, I need to figure out how to rotate them and then also I need to make them actually come together. Once I click, it should come together and then make them connected and then uh, move as a whole. Yep, uh, so far so good. I got it working, but as you can see, it's a little bit wiggly. So I had to get some opinion, uh, a little bit of feedback from the community. I found in a Discord for the Seattle local indie developers, game developer uh, community. So I just wanted to uh, get their opinion. Okay, everyone. Um, so just as a little context, I've been working on the Tears of a Kingdom crafting system on Godot, and I got a pretty good progress going, and I just wanted to see what you guys think about this. So here it is. You can see the range indicator. Um, this this was pretty fun to find out. And then most importantly, once you connect them, you can see, I don't, <laughs> oh my God, it's gotten worse. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I, um, but you see my concern here. Um, yeah, so this uh, jiggle physics, I, I think uh, I, I have a little concern about this, but uh, I just wanted to see what you guys think about it. And so as you guys can see, it seems like the jiggle physics is in, um, but in case you wanted to know how to actually make it so that it doesn't jiggle, problem here is that 
I'm putting the pivots, right, the joints that are connecting the two bodies on the edges of the connection. So it's too thin. So, and the way the joint works is that the bodies can rotate around those joints. So the two points that are really close to each other makes it so that the other bodies can kind of uh, move about around it. So we need a longer arm in this uh, distance between these two joints. And so I think the idea would be put one joint in the center of one body and put the other on the center of the other body. And then maybe even one more in the connecting edge to kind of solidify that structure. I think that'll fix it. So let me just do that real quick and show you that it works. So, okay, um, I got it to not jiggle. Right. You can see that they're pretty solidly fixed. Now I do have a concern for a little bit of performance issues because you're adding more objects in the system, but also it still has this like delayed behavior in rotation. Now, of course, there's some other ways to join two bodies and make it work as a one body. Uh, one suggested solution, which I've tested, um, is make it a single rigid body and then it'll move together which is a is a pretty good solution only thing is i'm imagining if i have multiple attachments right multiple body attachments and then later when i try to separate them out after combining them the logic for combining and separating becomes very messy and requires more coding and all that stuff so ideally, the best way I want it to be solved is for this joint to actually behave like a fixed joint. But, you know, this is what I got. I can think of some ways to make it fixed, but you know what? For the sake of this experiment, I think this is good enough. So I think I will move on. Okay, well, um, <laughs> It's done. I finished. I, I'm going to say it's finished. There's definitely more I could work on. The way it like collides and it clings onto some of the edges and how sensitive it is to rotation is a bit of a problem. But um, as far as this experiment is concerned, which I, I keep saying this a lot because, you know, the perfectionist in me wants to like actually get down to it and really like get all the kinks out and bugs out. But you know, I think the point of this experiment, point of this exercise is just to get the kind of gist of, okay, if I wanted to do something like this, I would do it. So without further ado, let me show you the final product. Yeah, I had to add this uh, extra platform here because the screen wasn't big enough, the stage wasn't big enough to demonstrate the actual sliding. Here it is, here it is. All right, we got some fans, we got some uh, materials. So first thing I'm gonna do is I will show you a little glider. So I could put the fan, right? And then I can activate it. Whee! Oh, so the what's happening here is that from here, the force is slightly above. So it's trying to rotate the platform upwards. So it's driving the um, plank into the ground. So the corner is catching the ground. I haven't figured out how to like resolve this without actually shaving the collision shape so that it doesn't have a corner. Uh, if you have if you have a solution for this, let me know. I would love to know, but I'm not sure I heard collision shapes catching each other is a common problem in game development. So maybe it is what it is. I'll just like move it a little bit. Here we go. Wee! Yep, there it is. And then uh, another fun experiment I did was I made a little hovercraft. So I'll uh, make a little, get that out of the way. And um, let me just rotate it. Oh. <laughs> As you can see, it's still very wobbly and like it likes to fling things around. But here we are. Here's our hovercraft. Go. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so, as you can see, it's working perfectly. Um, and therefore, my experiment is success. I don't want to spend any more time on this. I got the gist of it. Uh, I think this was pretty fun. Um, maybe in the future, there's a game idea that I will work on that uses this kind of mechanics. But yeah, that's it. Um, that's everything. Let me know what you think. If you want to see any other 
uh, experiment in the future that you want me to try out to figure out so I can share with you guys. Um, let me know in the comments. Well, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.